The headlines. UN Secretary General says military action cannot curb terrorism. APC extends sale of nomination forms as PDP reschedules primaries. President Buhari orders arrest prosecution of killers of army couple as IPOP denies beheading soldiers. And Ukrainian President Zelensky calls for longer truce to evacuate Mariupol civilians. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Zainab Bala. Hello and welcome. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says fighting terrorism must be multidimensional, as solely adopting the military option would not stop the activities of insurgents. The UN Secretary General spoke on Thursday to newsmen at, a, at State House Abuja after a meeting with President Mohamed Buhari. Kainde Amodu reports. The UN Secretary General is meeting President Buhari off the back of an assessment of the situation in Borno State. President Buhari says Nigeria is grateful that the world has not forgotten it in its fight against terrorism. Coming at a time when the entire global attention is focused on the unfortunate situation in Ukraine, we in this region are feeling already that the world is forgetting about us. There can be no better assurance that the world is with us as we confront extremist terrorist organizations, hunger, and the enormous problems of dealing with millions of displaced people than this important visit. Having seen for himself efforts by all stakeholders to stabilize the Northeast, the UN scribe attests that the situation in the region gives room for hope. And this success was not done by solely adopting the military option. It is simple. I saw it in Borno. If you fight terrorism just militarily, the terrorists will strike back. But if you fight terrorism militarily and address the root causes of terrorism, terrorism will no longer have a chance to persist. With the Russia-Ukraine war holding the world captive, the UN Secretary General is giving assurances that the attention on the two warring countries will not crowd out other issues in other parts of the world. We have not decreased our action in all other parts of the world. And my appeal is for those that support financially the United Nations not to divert funds from other humanitarian and development forms of cooperation to the Ukraine crisis, but to put additional contributions for that crisis, not undermining the efforts in humanitarian and development cooperation that are taking place all around the world. It has been an interesting two days for the UN Secretary General in Nigeria, and it seems he's taking back to New York a positive impression about how Nigeria is handling its security crisis. From State House Abuja, Kendi Amudu, Trust TV News. The All Progressive Congress APC National Working Committee on Wednesday extended the party's sale of expression of interest and nomination forms for the 2023 general elections to Tuesday, May 10, 2022. The National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress, Felix Mocha, disclosed this in a statement on Wednesday. According to Mocha, in a device timetable issued by the APC National Organizing Secretary, Suleiman Mohammed Argungu, the last day for submission of completed forms and accompanying documents is now Wednesday, May 11, 2022. Also, Congresses to elect local government areas state and national delegates will now be held from Thursday, 12th May to Saturday, 14th May, 2022. The National Working Committee of the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, has rescheduled its primary elections. A statement by Degbo Olugu 
Gunakba, National Publicity Secretary of the party, said the governorship primaries is now slated for Monday, May 23rd, 2022, while the senatorial district primaries comes up on Saturday, May 21st, 2022. Part of the statement also said the House of Representatives primaries is now set for Friday, May 20th, 2022, and State House of Assembly State Constituency Congress is for Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. The party also said on Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, the Local Government Area Congress is to elect one national delegate per local government area and one person living with disability in the 774 local government areas. Elsewhere, the Abia State Government has declared Thursday as a public holiday to enable residents to participate in the ongoing voters' registration exercise in the state. The one-day holiday is to enable those who are yet to take part in the exercise to do the needful in fulfillment of their civic rights and responsibilities, a statement from the government said. Accordingly, all markets, schools, government and other public offices are to be closed to ensure full participation. The government relieves public participation participation in the voters' registration exercise in the state has been lower than expected. Now, Vice President Yemiyoshi Bajo says there is no greater privilege than to have the opportunity to give one's best in the service of the country, contributing to society and making life better for the people. Oshibajo stated this during his visits to Taraba and Adama states in continuation of his engagements with stakeholders and delegates of the ruling All Progressive Congress ahead of the party's presidential primary. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity Office of the Vice President, Lao Lua Kande, said the VP was received in both states by their governors, Dara Sishak of Taraba State and Umar Fintari of Adama. He also visited the Lamido Adama's palace on arrival in the state where he told the monarch that his reason for aspiring for the office of the president of Nigeria is to serve the Nigerian people. While addressing delegates in both states, the vice president acknowledged the support that has been offered towards his presidential bid and re-emphasized that his purpose for seeking the highest office of the land was purely to serve Nigeria and give his best for the growth and development of the country. The vice president was accompanied on the trips by members of the National Assembly and other notable political leaders. Former Edo State Governor Adam Zoshomale has declared his intention to run for the seat of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Speaking during a press conference on Wednesday in Abuja, Adam Zoshomale said he will appropriately tax the rich to provide amenities for the poor. Oshomale, who is also a former APC national chairman, said if elected as president, he would insist that textile and automobile companies who want the continued patronage of Nigerians must relocate their factories to Nigeria to give jobs to the teeming youths of the country. While the APC is jostling for the right candidates to succeed President Muhammad Buhari, many aspirants have declared the intention to run for the top job. He said after considerations about where the nation is, he believes his entry into the race will give birth to a new Nigeria. That I, Adams, and you, our big boy, will show me day by day with confidence my desire to contest for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the platform of the party that we go for the All Progressive Congress. <laughs> Governor Omar Zalum of Borno State has declared his intention to run for second term as governor of the state. The governor made this known when the leadership of 150 Borno clubs handed over a cheque of 50 million naira for the purchase of nomination form and expression of interest. On his behalf, the report. At the early hours of Wednesday morning, hundreds of coalition members comprising clubs, groups, professional bodies in academia, health sector, marketers, transport unions and women groups marched to the Burno State Government House 
chanting campaign songs. <laughs> These Meduguri residents want Governor Zulum to seek for a second term in office ahead of the 2023 gubernatorial election. They say the giant strides and unprecedented achievements in the state are the reasons behind their call on the governor to seek re-election. For him again, we like his leadership and all the good works he has done in the state. We want him to continue in office. Uh, we want to fix him, but now we have a peace. Then the continuity is help us to to help us uh, fix in Medukuri. So now we have already seen on the ground what is the governor do for us. Governor Omara Zulum, who received the supporters, accepted the check of 50 million naira from the leadership of the Coalition for Zulum Good Governance Continuity Group. He said he is willing to contest for another term as governor of Burno State. <laughs> I'm honestly happy with all of you for contributing 1,000 Naira each for the form. With what you have donated, I have directed the money to be handed over to the, to the APC party chairman for necessary action. Remember, when I came into power, I promised peace. Now, are you not enjoying peace? You can go anywhere without fear. This insecurity will soon be a thing of the past and farmers can go back to their farmlands. There are unverified rumors that Governor Zulum delayed to declare his intention for re-election because he might be Vice President Oshimbajo's running mate. Chairman, Nigeria Governor's Forum and Akiti State Governor Kayode Faimi says tackling the current security challenges in the country will require aggressive recruitment of security personnel. Governor Fayami, who spoke on the sidelines of his declaration to run for the presidency of the country, is advocating decentralization of the nation's power grid for enhanced efficiency. The report. Intellectual approach to announce his intention to contest for the highest office in the land. As he unveils what he calls my agenda for Nigeria, there are obviously questions to answer. For instance, what are the impediments in addressing the nation's contemporary challenges? He says recruitment bottlenecks in the security sector. This country was able to recruit in an emergency manner in 1967. It moved from an army of 10,000 to 250,000 within a space of one year. Today, there are all sorts of bureaucratic impediments that are not allowing us to expand the men and women that we have in the armed forces and in the police. And we need to do that quickly. If we're not able to do that in the shortest possible time by clearing away those bureaucratic impediments, we need to bring on board our reserve elements who are still on duty. How do you address the twin challenges of epileptic power supply and rising unemployment in the country? The Ekiti State Governor advocates for the decentralization of the power grid to replace the existing grid, which he says has broken, while creating an enabling environment for the private sector to thrive. It's time to do away with a national grid. We now need to begin to look seriously in the direction of zonal or regional grids, or even micro and mini grids outside of the mainstream official uh, uh, national uh, energy grid. It's the only way to, to solve this problem and focus our energy on renewable energy as well. The formal declaration of the Ikiti State Governor adds to the long list of aspirants from the Southwest in the number one set. It is a big worry for political leaders in the zone who are now struggling to correct the situation. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. 
President Mohamed Buhari on Wednesday condemned the murder of two soldiers in Imo State by gunmen. Suspected members of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra beheaded an army couple, Gloria Matthew and Aldo Linus, who were on their way to fulfill their traditional wedding rites on Saturday. In a statement issued by presidential spokesman Garba Shehu, President Buhari described the killing of the soldiers as barbaric and alien. The president described the incident as unacceptable, adding that he has directed security agencies to do their utmost in apprehending the perpetrators and bring them to justice. Meanwhile, the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB has denied any involvement in what, it, what is called a dastardly and barbaric act of beheading of army couple, saying God will not forgive the people who carried out the heinous act. Soldiers attached to the 144 Battalion of the 14th Brigade of the Nigerian Army Abia State have reportedly killed four gunmen in Aba, the commercial hub of Abia State. The incident, which reportedly happened at about 2 p.m. on Wednesday, took place at the Urata Aba axis of the Enugu Port Harcourt Expressway. It was gathered that the gunmen wearing black attires had marched through popular streets and markets on Wednesday, warning traders and residents of a sudden impo imposition of a two-day sit-at-home order slated for Thursday and Friday. The hoodlums were said to have warned residents about the consequences of disobeying the order. Reports claim that the sit-at-home expected to be observed across the south southeastern states is in protest against President Muhammad Buhari's planned visit to Ebony State on Friday. Now, at least 60,000 people have been killed in Nigeria's 18 northern states in the last 10 years due to insecurity. The Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, which made this known, said according to a new report, 14,000 people lost their lives between 2011 and 2021 in the northwestern state. The report. The report, which also measured conflict-related casualties in the north-central state and the federal capital territory, reveals that around 11,000 people were killed in the period under review, while about 35,000 people were killed in northeastern state. Tracing similar development in casualties across other geopolitical zones, CDD in the report disclosed that similar development continued to fuel the ugly situation, especially lack of education, absent of state actors, economy war, security forces, cultism, land use dispute, ethnicity, religion, failure of justice system, overstressed security forces, among others. In the south-south region of the country, sea piracy and robbery remains key concerns as illegal bunkery, political violence, hazardous farmers clashes, oil spill, cultism, marginalization, human trafficking, ritual killing are said to be fueling violence and insecurity. According to the report, the growing insecurity and violence in the country were also fueled by shifting livelihood, circulation of small arms and light weapons, corruption and inadequate access to justice, geographical and regional dynamics as well as ideological grievances. The report went on to say increasing prevalence of misinformation and disinformation across traditional and new media spheres have deepened public anxiety and intergroup tension about the mountain insecurity in the country and the state responses to it. The report reveals that the development equally transverses the southwestern state, especially cases of hardest farmers clashes and political issues, leading to kidnapping, rape, arson as well as innate communal unrest and division. To address the prevailing situation, CDD said local and national stakeholders will need to be willing to try new approaches to curtail insecurity, stressing that the kinetic approach favored by the federal government may remain a mirage. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up. Federal government Lagos to earn $201 billion in taxes and royalties. Stay with us.
Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update, our top stories. UN Secretary General says military action cannot curb terrorism. APC extends sale of nomination forms as PDP reschedules primaries. Still ahead, today marks 12 years since the demise of former Nigerian President Umar Musa Iradua. He died on the 5th of May 2010. 12 years after his death, former President Goodluck Jonathan remembered his boss as a selfless leader and a peacemaker. Taken to his official Twitter handle, the former president wrote, Umar Musa Iradua is no longer with us today, but his strides in public life continue to testify for him and keep his memory alive. Former President Goodluck Jonathan described late President Yer Adwa as a soldier of truth and a true Democrat, adding that he was a servant leader and a good man, type that is hard to find. According to the former president, his boss was committed to justice, equity and other democratic virtues. Late President Umar Musa Iradua won the Nigerian presidential election on the platform of People's Democratic Party in 2007. The key legacies of the Umar Musa Iradua administration were his efforts towards reforming Nigeria's flawed electoral system, which had brought him into power. He is today fondly remembered by many Nigerians. Moving on, the House of Representatives reconvened for a one-day sitting on Wednesday to pass five important bills. Four of the bills relate to terrorism, money laundering and other uh, proceeds from crimes. President Mohamed Buhari had in separate letters to the two chambers of the National Assembly requested the passage of the bills explaining that the deficiencies in the country's anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism regime made it imperative for the passage of the bills. He warned that the non-passage of the bills posed a risk that might lead to the eventual blacklisting of Nigeria by the Financial Action Task Force. Addressing journalists after the session, spokesman of the House, Benjamin Kalu, noted that the new needed revisit as it will create a special control unit in the EFCC, which is now to be better equipped in handling issues relating to money laundering. The House later adjourned to May 24th. Students of the University of Benin, Edo State, on Wednesday protested against the ongoing strike action of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. On Tuesday, students equally protested around uh, University of Ibadan, or your state, calling for immediate reopening of public universities across Nigeria. In Uniband, students who protested around the university's gate and its environs had declared what they called Unistreet, meaning that Nigerian students would now be taking lectures on the streets, with some of them acting as lecturers, all in a bid to protest school closure. The strike action of the lecturers, which is entering its fourth month, has left public universities shut since its inception, following the lecturers' demands, which the federal government had allegedly not met. ASU had accused the government of poor commitment to the payment of earned academic allowances, the continued use of the integrated personnel payroll information system, and refusal to adopt the university's transparency and accountability solution, among others. Of University of Streets. Yes, as if we, see if we cannot learn at the four wall of the university, we can learn here. Yeah. This is Ring growth, the art of Bimi. We are trying to learn at the four wall of the university. This and yet, she died. That's how you see that fact. You know, they say that the classroom of the United States. And we have to help our parents and beg them also. If they don't help, if they don't complete this strike, there is no election. No education, no election. The love is enough. Yes, if this country has messed up the life of the youth, we will not be losers. We will not be losers. It's either in the class or in the streets. They should choose one.
And in business, the federal and Lagos state governments will earn total revenue of over $201 billion in 45 years when the Lekki Deep Sea port becomes fully operational, Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed has said. The minister stated this in Lagos when he undertook a tour of the $1.53 billion mega project on Wednesday. Accompanied by heads of parastatals under the Minister of Transportation, Mohammed expressed joy at the quality of work done, assuring that the port would become operational in the last quarter of 2022. According to him, when fully operational, the deep sea port will create over 169,000 jobs and bring revenues totaling $201 billion to states and federal governments through taxes, royalties and duties. According to the minister, phase one of the project has reached an 89% completion rate, assuring that it will hit the 100% mark in September this year. And on the foreign scene, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has called for a longer ceasefire in order to evacuate more civilians from the battered city of Mariupol in southern Ukraine as Russia intensifies its assault on the Azovstal steel plant, the last holdout of Ukrainian forces there. About 200 civilians, including children, are set to be taken shelter in the sprawling plant's underground bunkers, and Zelensky said it was necessary to continue the silence to get them all out. Zelensky again appealed for the assistance of the United Nations after the UN and Red Cross evacuated hundreds of people from Mariupol and other areas this week. A Ukrainian parliamentarian said Russian forces were inside the Azovstal plant and the commander of the regiment inside the vast factory said the situation was extremely difficult and that his soldiers were engaged in heavy, bloody battles with the Russians. Moscow has denied any assault on Azovstal is on Underway and says its forces will cease fire to open a humanitarian corridor for civilians for three days from Thursday. And in sports, Manchester City are left nursing yet more Champions League heartbreak after Real Madrid produced the most astonishing of a great list of incredible comebacks. Pep Guardiola's side were moments away from booking a second successive final appearance and setting up an all-English showpiece against rivals Liverpool in Paris, where Real caught them with a stunning soccer punch. Leading 1-0 on the night and 5-3 on aggregates after Riyad Mahrez's 73rd minute strike in a 10th semi-final second leg at the Bernabeu City, where rocked when Brazilian Rodrigues struck a quick-fire double with 90 minutes on the clock. That sent an epic tie into extra time and City never recovered from the shock. Conceding again soon after when Ruben Diaz fell, Karim Benzema and the prolific Frenchman stepped up to convert the resulting penalty. And that's it on News Update. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Zainab Bala. See you in a moment.